Hello everyone and welcome to N9TAX Labs and another exciting episode of Radio Joe. Today we're going to be looking at a pneumatic antenna launcher. Some little creation of mine that uh, had to build recently because we had some need to move some antennas and the old slingshot was all wore out. Uh, I've always wanted to put one of these things together and uh, seemed like a good opportunity to do so. It was relatively easy to uh, construct and I know there are a number of people with plans for these on the uh, on the net and I, I did look at some of the other plans that were out there and took some ideas that I liked and others that I didn't like I changed around a bit. Um, but today I'm going to show you what I did to build this one. Uh, seems to work rather well and um, you know the parts if you have to buy every single thing here will run you around $120 which isn't too terrible I suppose. Um, so I, I did have a couple of different um, models of this. Um, this this was the Mark I, <laughs> the, and this is the one that you'll see me putting together in the video here. Um, the only real difference between the Mark I and the Mark II, I should say, is the valve. Uh, I did end up using valves that uh, use threaded fittings in the, um, in the final version um, that, it, that it was the one that I would say is, is the right design. Um, if you ever have to change this valve, a glue-in type like this, you're, you're pretty much done. You're, you're not going to use any of this anymore because it's all glued together. Um, with the thread-in valve, you'll be able to replace the valve if you ever had to, and the valves aren't very expensive, so um, it is good to have that be a replaceable part. Not that this one doesn't work. works really well. Um, so This is the Mark II, and I don't know if you can see it, but there is threaded pipe fittings down in there, so that, that's the only difference, really. Uh, maybe got a little bit cleaner with my glue, glue work, but... Um, so the way this thing works is there's a pressure chamber here made of PVC and you can fill it through this little valve. It's just the same as a tire would take. There's a uh, gauge here on the end that allows you to see how much pressure you've put in it. Um, and I've even successfully used one of these little portable bike pumps in order to pump this up. So you don't have to have an air compressor. Um, you know, it takes a little bit of work, but this thing will make 150 pounds of pressure. So you could obviously put plenty of pressure in, inside of this launcher uh, in order to use it out in the field um, to put your antennas up in trees. So, um, a few things about it. Uh, ba basically, most of the parts here can be had at your local home center. Uh, the only things that I did end up purchasing not at a home center was the, uh, the little air tire fill valve here. Um, I did get those on Amazon and uh the fishing reel i did not get at you know a menards or home depot type place so uh outside of that everything came from uh well i take that back these hose clamps i had from uh, another project so I, I don't know what it costs to buy the hose clamps but uh, i suppose you can probably order them on amazon if they don't have them at a home center um, so there's lots of designs on the on the web for these launchers uh kind of change things up a little bit from what you'll find on the web just just a tiny little bit Mo most of the designs that i saw they're putting a cap on either end of the pressure chamber here and then they're epoxying a, a fitting into the end of that cap in order to put the valve and stuff down at the bottom and then turning up it, it does allow the barrel to not be out in front of the pressure chamber uh, and it does allow it to be a little bit shorter so Obviously, there's videos out there if you guys, you know, want to build one of those. Um, but it's, it's really the same concept. The only things that I've changed around a little bit here, and, and I'll tell you the reason I did it, was the way this pressure chamber is put together. I didn't... It's not to say that an epoxy fitting into a PVC cap wouldn't work. But I didn't like the idea of not having factory glued seams uh, all the way through the pressure chamber. Um, you know, I believe that this stuff is manufactured well, and if, if it's assembled in an in industry standard way with the glue and the um, solvent 
as it's supposed to be. Uh, I, I think that the danger um, of having a compressed air device is, is very minimized, right? So again, that was just my personal thoughts. Um, I, I wanted to, to build a device here that had um, factory approved glued fittings all the way through, at least up until the valve. Um, so, and you'll see how this is all put together. This, this is a little tricky here on the other side of the valve, but this isn't a pressurized fitting. So the only pressure that's ever on that side of the valve is when you're, when you're firing the ball out. And when you're doing that, you know, you're, you're not talking about a large amount of static pressure like you have in the tank. Cause you know, I, I found 80 PSI to be about the right, um, pressure to fill this thing to, to pretty much get maximum height out of it. And, um, you know, all of these, these pieces are all rated to 220 PSI. So I feel that makes it pretty safe. Um, since it's, it's, it's all assembled in, you know, by the manufacturer's recommended uh, process here. So, um, but basically the way this works is you'll fill this up, you know, with either an air compressor or a hand pump or something like that to the desired pressure. Now it's something you could play around with. Um, I, I have found that you know, smaller trees, 30, 40 PSI is enough to, to launch the ball over top of those and larger trees, you know, you might want to even go up to 80 or 90 PSI, although I've never had to fill it more than 80. And I've been able to get it over top of just about any, um, any structure I've tried to fire it over. So definitely, uh, rugged parts seem to be, um, you know, like it's going to last a while if it's taken care of. So I, I don't know. It's pretty nice, uh, pretty nice device all around, but basically, yeah. So it's just some PVC. Um, this end piece here is kind of what's the magic, uh, to get from this four inch, you know, all the way down to these smaller sizes. This is a piece I found at the local home center called a drum trap. Now this is just half of it. The other half I discarded, but it fits in the three inch, uh, reducer, you know, so I don't have to have a, gigantic number of reducers on here and it's nice because it turns it you know 90 degrees and then i could put my 90 on there and man I'm, I'm i'm facing right the way i want to right now so i think that drum trap was kind of the magical piece there that i i ended up finding to get this thing just the way i wanted it um sprinkler valve is a standard rainbird rainbird sprinkler valve and uh, you get the one inch one don't get the three quarter because the one will give you uh, more volume of air traveling through it at any given time and again these these can be had at your local home center so, so not not very difficult uh, parts to find which is good um, sprinkler valve had to be modified you'll see that in the video here as we get going but basically the modification was to take the electric solenoid off of it and take the little bleeder cat um, valve off of it epoxy those holes up and then uh, drill and tap this uh, 90 into the uh, plastic here, put a blowgun on it. What happens is when this fills up, there's a small uh, equalizing valve in the diaphragm in the middle, and it's very small, it has a very small pinhole in it. So as this fills with air, the both sides of the diaphragm stay equalized. So there's the same amount of pressure here and here, you know, on this side of the valve. Um, when you quickly hit this blowgun, you're dumping all the pressure on the back of this valve faster than the equalizing valve can equalize it, which forces the rubber um, diaphragm open immediately, dumping the entire contents of air pressure inside of the pressure vessel here in, in less than a second. So uh, it's very effective at launching the ball. Um, really works rather well. And again, you'll see it demonstrated later on in the video. So. Having all that been said, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do to get started in building our antenna launcher um, PVC tennis ball gun is we're gonna modify our sprinkler valve. Now I've already taken these screws loose to expediate things here a little bit, but this is just a standard Rainbird sprinkler valve. I'll put the model number in the, uh, in the description of the video. The first thing we're gonna do is take this actuator off this runs on 24 volt ac um this we don't know we could just discard this we're not going to use it um so down in the bottom of of the hole here where the actuator is you see there's two little pinholes if we take this apart just 
screws like to stick a little bit here. Get rid of the screws. If we look at the bottom. You'll see one little pinhole feeds through to here and one little pinhole feeds through to there. Um, we're going to fill these with epoxy because we don't use, we're not going to use these holes. We're also going to remove the bleeder valve and fill that hole with epoxy too. See it goes down through there. Um, we're going to drill a hole in the center of this and we're going to tap it for our um, exhaust and then I think we're going to trim this down here a little bit too. So uh, that's how we're going to get started. Now a little bit on how this works. This little yellow piece here, and if you see it on the bottom there, is a, is a valve that allows a small amount of whatever, whether it's water or air, is operating through this valve to come through from the input into the inside. You can see this, this, rubber, this rubber stopper seals the output right here. Um, so you know the air air will come in on the outside here well eventually it will dump back out there into our gun the way this works is as the air fills up in our tank the small valve here will allow air to come on both sides of this rubber plunger um, and it will be equalized this little spring here held down by the cap will keep this closed now there will be a lot of air pressure in here, right? If we pump it up to 50 PSI, there will be 50 PSI on this side and 50 PSI on this top side, too. And so what will happen is when we put our dump valve on here, which is going to be made of a blowgun, um, what we're going to do is we're going to actuate the blowgun. It will immediately evacuate the air that is on the top of this, of this valve, which will quickly allow the valve to pop up and dump all the air out of our gun and hopefully fire our tennis ball nice and high so we get our antennas up in the trees. So I'm going to I'm going to do a couple of things behind the scenes here. I'm going to cut this down. I'm going to drill a hole in here and get ready to tap this and uh and then we'll uh we'll be right back. Okay. So we're back. Now we have our modified top. As you can see, I basically have cut everything flush. Um so that when we go to spin our blowgun around to screw it down into this hole um, you know our blowgun is set up at a, with a 90 degree angle like this so it will screw screw around there without hitting any of the plastic pieces that's stuck up um, so that's basically all that's all about um, now some people when they make these and I'm sure you've seen other videos will use a quarter inch NPT um, I did opt to go with an eighth just to make sure that I wasn't too close out to these walls. Um, as you can see with the hole, uh, the 21 64 bit, which is what you would drill for a uh, eighth inch pipe tap, um, leaves plenty of meat around this hole as far as plastic. Um, yeah, I was concerned that, you know, if I got too close to the edges of anything, maybe it would break. And I, I still feel like um, an eighth inch has plenty of, of volume, you know, dumping out. I, I don't think it'll be a problem getting the gun to work. Um, and if it doesn't work with the eighth inch, uh, we can still go ahead and drill it to a quarter and tap it with that. So we have our pipe tap set up here. Um, you want to come in from the top because pipe taps are tapered. Um, start to work it in very easily. You'll, you'll see very quickly that it's, it's beginning to cut. You want to get it nice and square um, with, the, with the device so you get a nice nice square hole going in there and and work that guy in there you don't have to go horribly deep with this thing you know get it coming out the other side a little bit just to get past the edge of the cutting piece and that's that's about it and we back him back out of there and I don't know if you can see that but now we have threads get it to focus on that but um and that will allow us to screw our blowgun on to the side of this we may actually want to go just a little bit deeper with that tap get a little, little bit more cut there it's always it's always better to go easy first and 
cut some more after if you need to. Because once you've cut too deep, it's too late. That old measure twice, cut once adage. We just want to make sure that we get good engagement with threads down into that hole. You can see it's once I tighten it up, it'll be all the way to the bottom of that plastic there. Shouldn't bother our spring. But there we have our dump valve. Now, you know, this will go on the side of the gun and boom, here will be your trigger. As soon as you dump that air out of the side of this valve, um, it's going to dump everything that's that's in our air chamber straight out the end of the gun. Um, now I'm told that these things can launch the ball up to 200 feet in the air with the right amount of pressure. So we're going to soon find out. Okay, so we're back. Um, I'm going to do the final stage here. I'm going to glue up all of our little holes. Remember, we have the three holes that we need to epoxy shut. We have the one from the bleeder valve, and then we have the two from the sprinkler's actuator valve, um, which were too small to uh, quickly actuate this valve for us. So we're just going to close those holes up. Now, I, I just bought some regular plastic bonder that I found at a local hardware store. Um, these are such small holes that it really any kind of uh, you know uh, plastic adhesive or, or you know epoxy is probably going to work just fine. So you can give this give this stuff a try and get yourself a little scrap of cardboard, of course, and you know, squeeze out equal amounts of that, like so. Let's see if we can close that back up. Definitely reusable. Uh, all right. So to mix this stuff here until the color is even. With any epoxy, you want to get the two parts as equal as possible and mixed up really good. It's a 15 minute uh, set time here, so it's not going to have a lot of pot life. This is this stuff's going to harden up pretty quick, so we want to make sure to get her mixed. Get her in them holes fast. Okay. Seems to be pretty evenly mixed up there now. We'll fill up our little uh, hole there. And then these guys over here. Now I would keep squeezing this stuff down the hole nearly until you almost saw it come out the other side I imagine Just make sure we get it filled up real good this this hole right here is on the output side so it's not quite as as uh, important as the one down down there in the bottom so we're gonna put plenty of this in there though because we've got a bunch that we mixed up and we're gonna squeeze it all down in there and really get that guy sealed up so we don't have no air leaking because if air does leak out of this hole here, it can cause your gun to fire. Your uh, launcher, I should say. Not really a gun. Could cause the launcher to misfire, and we don't want that. So we're going to squeeze that stuff down in there. Make sure we're getting it, getting it all filled in. And that's it. Now, all I got left to do is to reassemble this um, and then we could start with the next phase of putting the uh, tenno launcher together okay so now we finished with our valve epoxy's all nice and hard um, that's never coming out of there so the holes are all good and sealed we have our dump hole that we threaded in earlier so we'll put that aside for the minute we're going to look at what it's going to take to get the rest of this thing put together so i've cut all my pieces and um, for my pressure chamber we're going to be using this four inch nice good size pvc here um, very important when you buy the four inch or any of the larger pvcs you make sure that there's a psi rating on there for pressure um, a lot of this pipe nowadays is made with a cellular core 
and just a coating of PVC on either side and they're not made for pressure. That will not work as a pressure chamber. To show you that, I did purchase a piece um, just to illustrate here because I think this is very important because if we don't do this safely then we probably shouldn't be doing it at all. You'll find this pipe will say not for pressure. You'll also want to look for this cellular core. Um, it's okay if it says DVW which is I believe like drain vent waste. Um, that's fine. Um, stay away from this cellular core and definitely look at this not for pressure. Um, the pipe you want is going to have a PSI rating on it. Um, this is still DVW pipe but if you look at the edge of it this is solid PVC all the way through. So this is going to be the stuff that's safe to use. Um, we're not going to put more than about 80 PSI inside of this chamber anyway because we don't need that much pressure for this thing to work well. Um, so I cut my piece about 8 inches long. Um, different people go with different lengths. Um, you know, mine's more in order to get a little bit more volume. Maybe I can run a little bit lower pressure. Um, some of the other designs for this this device that you'll find out on the net will put a cap on either end of this and end up epoxying a fitting into one of the caps. I really didn't want to do that on mine. Um, so I found some parts that um, that I think are going to be a little safer because it will all be glued PVC. Um, nothing's going to be epoxied. So, and, and I feel like with the pressure rating of PVC, if it's all glued, it's going to be safer for it to be actual PVC glue joints um, than it will be, you know, to epoxy things together. So let's take a look at what I've come up with here. Um, I do have this reducer on this end. This takes me down to three inch. Um, the other end, we're going to put a cap, um, and that will be the end of the, the main pressure chamber. Um, so now we need to get to the size that we can run through our valve. So there's a number of different ways to do this. Like I said, there are, there are people online that have put an adapter into the end of this, drill a hole, drop that in there, and then epoxy it on the inside. While that may work, um, I don't know, I feel like it's safer to have a fully glued solution. So, so I'm going to do that. And then I found this neat little device. This is a trap. Now, I'm not into plumbing, but um, that you could use in your house. Uh, I don't remember what it was called, but I'll put the names of all of this in the uh, in the uh, description. So it has a little, you know, clean out on there, and it's made for plumbing. So you'll run, you know, water down into it from whatever, and then back up and out the other side, um, and then you have a little clean out trap. Well, what I realized is that this is three inch. So I'm going to take this piece here and just throw it away. I don't need that um, because this guy here will glue into the end of my chamber. And boy, what that already does for me is it gives me the 90 degree angle that I wanted to come back around to where my barrel is going to be. And the other thing that it does for me is uh, it connects to the end of this without having to um, take epoxy and epoxy something into one of these caps. So um, this to me feels like it's going to be a lot safer situation to use. Um, so then from that point on, well, we'll take that out. I've got a street elbow, and a street elbow will go in there like so. Um, that's going to get us going in the right direction, right? So then we're going to take that down to a one inch fitting like that. We'll use, you know, a little section of one inch pipe. We'll glue our valve in here. Another piece of one inch. Another adapter. And then the one place where I am going to epoxy. <laughs> Um, because I don't really have a better option for doing it, is where I go to my barrel. Um, I am going to drill out the end of this. Uh, this is a two and a half inch cap for uh, electrical PVC. So we're going to drill this out. And what it's going to be is it's still going to be a relatively glued solution. So I'm going to drill it so that this adapter here fits down inside of it. And then I'm going to take on the other side so inside of this and I'm gonna glue that so it, it will look like that down in there um, 
So this will help hold the cap from coming off. Now, this side is not under pressure like the other side is, right? Oh. <laughs> and we got to watch this too because I got this valve backwards. That's another interesting good thing to to talk about while we're while we're on the subject. This valve has a flow arrow on it. <laughs> if if we don't put our valve in the correct direction, it's absolutely not going to work. Um, so it's good that I caught that there, and I haven't glued anything yet, so it's not a problem. But so that's basically going to be it. This is all going to come back to here, and then from that point forward, um, we'll put our barrel, which is this is two and a half inch electrical PVC. So. Um, the reason we're using the two and a half is because that is the size that a tennis ball fits in. Um, you can get two and a half inch plumbing pipe. Uh, it is rather difficult to find, so I just went the route of the gray electrical PVC because it really doesn't matter if it's a little bit different color. Um, we could paint the gun or do whatever we want later, so it's it's not a problem. And, and I wanted to illustrate all of this with parts that you can absolutely buy at pretty much any home center. Um, I had to go to two different stores to find all these parts. Um, very, two very common ones that you will probably find in your neighborhood. So, And the only reason I had to go to a second store is because the first store I went to did not have this 4-inch PVC in a pressure rated pipe. They only had it in the cellular core pipe and... Uh, we weren't going to build anything with that to put pressure in. So The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go glue all this together, and then we'll get ready to put our air fitting and um, get this thing finalized. Um, so I'll be back. Okay, so two things I realized as I was working on things, trying to get this thing put together, is one, I want to drill a hole in the end of this cap for the barrel here. And uh, I need this inch and a half piece of PVC to be able to fit in it. Well, an inch and three quarter bit hole saw, which is a little bit too small as you can see. And then above, up from that was a two inch, which was just a little bit too big. Well, I want this to be a nice tight fit. So I drilled the inch and three quarter hole. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little burr bit and there's probably different ways that you can do this to make it a little bit bigger um, but I'm gonna ream this out so because I want a nice tight fit here I want to actually glue this into this cap with PVC glue uh, so that you know this this thing's pretty solid once once we get it put together I want it to last a long time I don't have to build another one and um, so yeah it's important to get it nice and centered because this part which is gonna go on the other side you know, once, once we get this thing through, we'll be putting this together like that. So this will go in there, and then we'll glue this over this. Um, and uh, getting it nice and centered is important. I think I got it pretty centered there because this barely fits inside the pipe that's going to glue into this, the two and a half inch gray pipe. Um, there, was a little, there was a little divot mark in the middle, which I feel like was the center I, I drilled a small pilot hole through this way, and then I turned it around and drilled back through this way with my hole saw. So, and uh, and it might be off a little bit, but we're going to get it. You know, we're going to get it as close as we can. So, we get some air here. And we're going to try and ream this guy out. starting to go in so I'm gonna stop right there because I want it to be that tight um, once I put some glue on this and some some PVC primer this is going to uh, it's gonna slide right in there now the only other thing we have to we have to watch out for and they make these couplings and slip slip couplings too but they're they're a lot looser inside and I wanted to use a regular coupling but it does have a rim in there which is going to get in our way. So I'm going to use that same tool to grind that rim out. As you can see, 
see that rim is all gone from the inside of that now. Um, <laughs> what that's going to allow me to do is shove this past where it's supposed to stop. You know, if you were putting two pipes together, you'd, you'd obviously want them to both stop at the center, but we're not doing that. So we want to we wanna be able to push this as far down as we can so that it sandwiches, you know, this, this coupling, this uh, adapter up against the, uh, you know, it's going to go like that. But we want it to be able to go all the way down against the back of the gray um, so that it can lock this thing in there. It looks like we got it pretty good and centered. Um, and then that's going to adapt our, our output into the barrel. Um, and like I said, I'm going to glue this to the gray. And I'm also going to glue this coupling inside. I think that that it should be sufficient enough to keep this barrel secure. Um, again, without using any epoxy, which really isn't for putting PVC together, right? Um, I want to use the materials that are made to put together PVC. This is why I've you know, strayed from the designs that you will find on the internet and kind of come up with my own thing here. And we'll see how it works when we're done. All right, so we're back with a fully assembled launcher, minus a couple small pieces here. Now, I will point out, please, when you're gluing things together, think safety first. Um, make sure to use primer. You'll see I use my purple primer here. I glued all of this with the amount of glue and coverage that is recommended by, this, by the manufacturers of this PVC. Um, that will ensure that you're getting a pressure rating that meets or exceeds what this plastic is rated for. Um, very important, you know, any powered tool um, that we build you know, definitely could, um, could injure someone. You want to take all the safety precautions that you can when you're uh, when you're doing things like this. So um, I think that we're going to be good. Again, we have all um, factory approved type of glue joints through our entire pressure section. So I think that's important. So the first thing we're going to do is cut in our gauge. Um, you you could put it anywhere you want. Now I would I would put it somewhere where it was on maybe a cap or a fitting so it's thick I'm gonna put mine here on the end um, I just feel like it's out of the way down there uh, my thoughts are when I fill this thing with air I'm probably gonna lay it down like it's laying down right now so putting this right here and facing it up towards myself is gonna make it easy for me to uh, you know to um, read and and get the proper amount of pressure in the gun now, now in the launcher so the other thing is this little air fitting, if you take this cap off, you'll see this is the same type of Schrader type valve that you would use in a tire in your car. It has an eighth inch MPT pipe fitting on the other side. I got these on Amazon. They were really cheap. Um, so that will allow you to use a, a regular air chuck to fill this up. I think I'm going to put this um, over here uh, so that it's one, not sticking out the side, but it's it's on a on a part you know I thought about putting it here but if I push down on it you know maybe the gun's gonna rock if it's here it's gonna be nice and solid if this thing is laying down on its side like this um, but anywhere on the pressure chamber that's up to you you can put that so let's start uh, let's get those let's get those guys in there and then we'll be ready to test this out as soon as this glue sets up a little bit so like I said I'm gonna go kind of about right there somewhere where it's not sticking out the side I'm going to drill me a hole. Sure, we got to go all the way through. Take our trusty tap. Same, same as we did when we modified our valve, right? We're gonna, we're gonna run this tap down in there, probably about halfway or so sure we get some decent threads. So that was the eighth inch tap, 2164 drill bit. Now you can see we got some threads in there. When you put these in, everything I put together, all my piping is put together. I use Teflon tape. Um, 
use some sort of sealer either if you're not using Teflon tape some sort of pipe thread compound so that you don't have any leaks about three wraps on an eighth is sufficient and she ought to screw right down in there gotta get it, gotta get it straight onto that hole which isn't always easy when you make a hole at an angle okay so now we have our air fitting we're ready to fill this guy with air we want to make sure that we can Get our gauge in there so we don't put too much air in it. Blow it up, which would be bad. The bit that came with the larger one is a 7 16 It's always important to make sure you're using the right drills for your taps. Okay, so now we have our hole drilled. See that there? We get our tap started in there. Like so, again, I didn't bring in the right size tap handle for this tap, but that's all right. You can use a wrench, anything that'll get her to turn. Not a problem. These pipe taps are tapered. Pipe threads are tapered threads, so you got to be careful that you go in far enough, but not too far, so they can get a nice tight seal. You start in going about halfway, halfway down the tap. See how that feels? If it's not enough. We'll go a little bit more. It's starting to feel like about halfway down that tap there. So we'll back that out. And for the purposes of this video. I put this launcher together first, but um, in reality, if you're gonna if you're gonna do this, you should probably drill and tap anything that you can ahead of time. Now, obviously, stuff that's going through two pieces, um, you wouldn't be able to. But if you were to make a mistake and mess this up, um, it would simply mean a another trip to the hardware store to get another cap. Um, especially if you're not familiar with. Drilling and tapping can be a little bit daunting to, when you're getting started. So, um, the taps and drills also came off Amazon. Uh, that's something you will not find in your in your home stores. Um, unfortunately, you know, not a lot of people tap pipes, so those stores don't seem to feel any real need to carry them. But I ordered it from Amazon. I had it in one day. And that was good enough. Probably take you at least that amount of time to gather all the parts you need to build this thing. So there you have it. We have a completed completed launcher at this point. Um I'm not going to fire this for a little bit while because the glue, the glue is still a little fresh. Um, you want to, you know, give that glue some hours to set up, and uh, you know, make sure that it that is bonded really well before we start putting pressure in something like this. All right, so we've got our uh, launcher now all ready to be tested out. I added a couple of things to it. Um, as you'll see, I have added a fishing reel so we can uh, draw back our, our, our string as soon as it's gone over the tree. I also added this um, band strap right here and put a little piece of rubber in between the uh, tank and the, and the barrel. Just kind of make this thing pretty solid. So this is just a large hose clamp. Um, it's actually made this thing seem like it's going to stand up really well so um, pretty good I, I think we're ready to go we've got our air compressor all pumped up there and uh, got our little air chuck so we'll go ahead and remove the uh, little cap here and uh, 
see if we can't fill this guy up now I do need to get an antenna up into a tree I have a tree recently that uh, fell apart so it's a good thing that this thing is uh, ready to go here all right so here we are out in the yard we're getting near our tree here that we want to try and uh, get our antenna back up in yeah we had a tree failure and part of it had to be cut down so we're gonna try and get it back up let's see if you look it's a pretty tall tree I would put it at maybe 70 to 80 feet not 100% sure but uh, it's a good uh, good good tree to put an antenna up in okay so we have it most important thing here one don't point the barrel at yourself um, the second thing is here make sure you push the release on your on your fishing reel because if you don't your line's not going to come out and uh, probably break your line off of the ball so let's give this thing a try see if we can't get it over the top That easily, easily, with no problems whatsoever, went all the way over the top of that tree. Um, so now I need to get it down uh, the other side and uh, tie my rope onto it, and we'll be ready to uh, pull the antenna back up. All right, so this ball actually came to a pretty handy spot here. Um, it's hanging, oh, well, I don't know, about five and a half, six feet off the ground. So I'm able to uh, reach it with my hand, pull it down to where we can work with it. Um, so not too bad, really, considering the height of the tree and everything we had to go over, um, being able to get this thing to come over. So I'm going to get my uh, cord tied onto it here and see if we can't uh, get this antenna back up in the trees. Now, just on an aside, I, I used to have to try numerous times to get my antennas up in the trees back when I was using the uh, slingshot and literally no camera tricks, nothing, no messing around, no kidding, and I, I am, I'm being dead honest with you right now, that was the absolute first time I've ever fired one of these things to try and put an antenna up in a tree. That's how well this thing works. Um, I'm not selling them, so I'm not trying to uh, push a product or anything. I'm just really impressed with the design and, and how well these things seem to operate. So, for what it's worth, so we've got our tennis ball off now. You can see this, but I fed the fishing line through that little cone we were speaking of. I'm going to uh, get my Dacron rope and loose off the roll. Now, I feel like it's probably best to like put a knot in the end of this rope here. And then tie the uh, fishing line through the little loop in that knot. And a lot can be said about knots, but just a simple make a loop and tie it into a knot should be sufficient. I mean, we're only trying to get this thing over the trees. It won't have any, any real uh, tension on it or anything. So go ahead and put a couple knots in there. If I wanted to get real fancy, I'd put like a figure eight. Um, those are really good knots, but again, we're not lifting any weight. This is just uh, a dead piece of line. So, so there you go. With that cone now, it sits over top of top of our knots. Will hopefully give a nice, a nice smooth transition for this thing to slide over branches and things. I guess we'll find out. So since I'm doing this by myself, and I could easily get help if I wanted someone to help me do this, but I, I would rather illustrate. Um, that you could do these projects w without anyone else and that's kind of the aim of, of just literally doing these things by myself 
Um, since I'm doing it by myself, I don't have anyone to pay the rope out. So I don't know if you can see that very well, but what I've done here is I've laid the rope out back and forth on the ground. You know, it should be an ample amount to get this thing over the tree. That way, I can um, pull this thing over without any friction. Uh, I, you know, I don't want the roll sitting on the ground unrolling or anything like that. I'd, I'd rather it, um, it, it, it be nice and easy to pull over, right? Because we don't want to put too much stress on our fishing line or anything like that. We really want this thing to just pull over the tree without any um, difficulty. Uh, so we should be about ready to go here. We'll get this set up and uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Well, that's it, here's my rope. So now we're over top of a very tall tree. Took almost no effort whatsoever. All I have to do now is tie my antenna on, pull it back up, and we're done. Now this happens to be the end of a wire dipole antenna that I've had up. The way it's been in this tree for the better part of a decade. I just cut the old wire off, I'm not sure, or the old rope off, I'm not sure if we can get focused on that, but that thing is all crusty, nasty. But this is the background rope I was talking about. This rope's been up there for every bit of a decade, and it is some really good quality rope. Um, I won't take a rope down out of the tree without uh, putting up fresh new rope. It's not a not good practice, so. Rope is cheap enough that there's no good reason to use old rope in the tree. Um, just asking for trouble. So, I'm going to get this guy pulled up and uh, and that'll be it for the outdoor activities in this, uh, this particular video. Thanks for watching. Okay, so one thing I haven't showed you yet is how I'm attaching the cord to the, uh, or the fishing line to the tennis ball. Basically, I poked a little hole in the tennis ball with a knife and I took a piece of that black Dacron rope. I made a loop out of it and tied a knot on the end and pushed it through that hole. It's really tight, so, you know, that thing won't pull back out. And then we just tie the fishing line to it. Typically, I'll just cut it off every time because once you tie knots in it, it starts to get weak and, uh, you know, we don't want to have to redo things, so. and. I would say, you know, the line in the reel, I replace it a lot. I don't, you know, line gets, starts to get memory in it and loops and stuff like that. And really want this stuff to be nice and straight so it pays out real good. Um, I use a closed face reel. Some people tell me an open face reel would probably be better. So maybe you want to use that. Any sort of reel that can hold, uh, you know, 100, 150 so yards of, uh, of line should be good. Um, get you get you going there so well there you have it i hope you enjoyed that i hope you learned something today um again these weren't very hard to build very effective in in getting our uh, line over a tree to get our antennas hung um i just do want to say that i don't make any claims to proper engineering in this and if you do decide to build one of these by this design um, you're doing so at your own risk um, this video was merely instructional to show you what I did in order to build one of these cannons. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, as always, if you enjoy our videos, please hit that subscribe button down there, help us out a little bit, and definitely like the video if you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one. <laughs>